I'm good to go. Welcome to Overwatch, and welcome to a kind of a special issue of the stream as well. Like you can see uh, Twitch chat's down there. Hello, Twitch chat. And you can see I'm up close and personal in big face because this week's a little bit special and a little bit different. I am in the, the Blizzard launcher and it's actually kind of a special thing for me because I've been playing Blizzard games since I was about 10 years old. Um, and I just want to sort of give my appreciation to Blizzard for, you know, supporting creators for what they do, supporting creators for how they treat creators and how they interact with them. It's a really, really great thing to do. And I just want to sort of give my love to, back to Blizzard. If anyone from Blizzard is watching this, just to make sure that, you know, I'm not screwing up. You, have, you guys have all my love for the way you do things and the way you handle things. It's great. It's awesome. That's about all I'm going to do talking about that. Instead, we're going to go over to the main screen in a second when I get it set up. And we're going to have a look at this coaching video. So now that I'm done sort of filleting a multi-million dollar company, let's focus on what's important here. Let's focus on the game. Let's bring Twitch chat down this way a little bit. And what we're going to be doing today is coaching the many. If you're not familiar with the stream, if you're new, perhaps, uh, feel free to join in with the chat. Feel free to join in. Uh, they're very welcoming. They're very polite. Chat, be very welcoming and polite. And yeah, it should be pretty fun. Make sure your launch your face says, I don't even know what a Meitu filter is. That, that's me being being strange. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at a McCree game that was sent in a little while ago, but it's still very, very applicable. I almost did a Roadhog game today, and I almost did a D.Va game today. The Roadhog game would have been difficult, because, of course, Roadhog's completely different, and so is D.Va. So it's kind of like Roadhog and D.Va footage is now, ah, I don't know what to do with it. Um, we might do a Roadhog game anyway, and just, like, contrast and compare with Hook 1.0 and Hook 2.0, and how you'll be thinking differently about playing the game and doing that. In this instance, we uh, were pretty much right in the middle of the curve in terms of rank. We're 2.5k, 2.5k on either side, so it's pretty much like right on the 50% uh, on the dot. And um, we're going to be watching this guy, Mercedes, and he's going to be playing McCree. Now, McCree is an interesting hero. It is a very, very interesting hero um, because he has a lot of control, a lot of influence and control. And, and I've done coaching the many on McCree before, and I talked about it there, but we're really going to be hammering home on that point today because it's very important. Let's get into this. Let's move Twitch chat away. Bye, Twitch chat. And let's start getting into it. Turn it up a bit. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to be looking at is basically a fairly standard game. This is on the previous patch before any of you panic, but they will be running 2 to 2 and a couple of interesting things happens. Wasn't my Osiris in early coaching the mini VOD? Maybe. Maybe he's been in twice. This just shows how much I look into the names because we got my Osiris over here on the McCree. Okay, and everyone is going to be playing kind of standard heroes, but not in a standard meta way. So the meta for our last patch, this patch, who knows what it is, it's changing at the moment, was the triple tank meta. That's not going to be in this game. We're going to be running McCree instead. And I think McCree is actually going to be very valuable to learn for the upcoming patch. It's part of why I picked this, because I think McCree is going to be making a bit of a comeback, because the thing that was shutting down McCree and Reaper a lot, for example, was D.Va. And D.Va's a lot weaker this patch, so it's going to be worth learning these heroes. Nice type in the stream title. Please tell me there isn't one. What's it? Yeah, it is typo. Wow. Good job, me. It's launch your hype. There you go. I'm going to fix that right now as we do load in. So the thing, the first thing I do whenever I load into a game, first thing I do whenever I load into a game is I look at our team lineup and I try and figure out, well, what exactly is my role here? We've got Solid 76. So he's going to be doing a lot of the long range damage. We've got two tanks. They're going to be fairly up close. The big thing I'm noticing instantly is that we don't have a Reinhardt. If we don't have a Reinhardt, we're really going to have to change how we approach the game and how we actually handle things going forward. And that's pretty simple because it means that we can't stay like out in the open as much. We're going to, have to be very aware of cover and very aware of where we're moving. That also means that we're going to, have to be very careful when they're doing um, stuff like throwing flash, uh, when Reinhardt's got stuff like Earthshatter ready, for example, when Graviton Surge is going to be ready, when Diva Bomb is ready. If they have these resources, we have to be super careful with how we're going to be dealing with things. So we're here on Oasis, Oasis new map. Honestly, I still don't know the most effective ways to play Oasis. Um, I noticed a lot of teams going and contesting the high ground, for example. I kind of like that approach, but because we don't have a Lucio, we probably don't want to be doing that. We want to try and get towards the middle and then try and play carefully. Enemy team moves straight into the point instantly and we start landing headshots. Instantly, I'm noticing a problem because we're playing like we have a Reinhardt. And notice where the nearest cover is. It's three freaking miles away. There's nothing really blocking the damage. We can just instantly take a huge amount of hurt here. We're totally reliant on our healing. It does allow us to sort of get some damage out there. And luckily, the enemy team spends all their time flanking around. But if they ran straight at us, we would have problems. So again, just be very, very careful if we don't have a Reinhardt in terms of your positioning. This Genji, though, the fact that they have a Genji tells us a lot and means that instantly we, we have a job to do. Okay, as McCree, we instantly get a responsibility when we spot that Genji. So we're running out, running out, running out, running out, shelling damage, shelling damage. Good, 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 good. 
And then we see the Genji. And the second that we see this, this is when we must think, okay, this guy is my responsibility. That gives us sort of two jobs so far that I'm noticing in this game. We have two main functions, which is stopping the Genji from just savaging the backline. So we want to hang around with Zenyatta and Anna. We're doing that. Good. And making sure that the Reinhardt can't just run into people, keeping this Reinhardt barrier disrupted. That's sort of a lower priority, but it's something else we want to be doing. So we have Genji, priority one, Reinhardt priority two. Okay, so we're shooting, shooting, shooting. Genji starts coming in. The second that you see a Genji jump like this, by the way, this is always a very good indication that he's probably going to do a dash. And we had to be flashbanging like the second we started seeing that. This instance, the Genji's already reacted, so we might have wanted to hold on to our flashbang. Genji versus McCree is a matchup that we're going to talk about a lot in this episode of Coaching the Menu as well, just because it does become very prevalent as we get further and further into the game. Um, the thing with Genji versus McCree, especially at this kind of level, the Genji is going to be a little bit slow. And that's not to slight the Genji, it's just the fact that there is generally a little bit of a reaction time in going... There's a McCree there, I need to be deflecting to stop the flashbang. So the instant you see Genji, honestly throwing out the flashbang is not a bad idea, but the best way of doing it of course is by just prioritizing throwing it into our feet. We're doing well here, we're focusing on the Genji, but we're making a critical, critical error in this movement. We're actually, like, notice that there's just no cover here and the entire enemy team is stood here, and look at what we do. We just blunder our way forward. Imagine what that Roadhog is seeing. He's just seeing a McCree going to 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 Actually, Ganymede, where are you? Ganymede. Ganymede is McCree. Ganymede doesn't do so well with the green screen. He's actually looking okay. Oh, wow. I've managed to configure the green screen. My Ganymede doesn't go invisible. So Ganymede is McCree. McCree is going to 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 And he's just just dead. Just like you notice we instantly take a shitload of damage. Now we're in no state. We're under 50 hit points. We can't be fighting Genji anymore. We're useless. We're going to die like that. And that's because we don't have anything in front of us. And that's where we have to be really, really, really careful with our positioning. Now, it's not a nightmare situation so far. The enemy team definitely has an advantage, but we can start recouping that. We have some good resources. We have a good counter to their Graviton Surge, for example, with um, Zenyatta. And we have uh, some high-impact ultimates. Hopefully, Soldier can build up in time and start dealing with that. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I'm going to have a slurp of coffee while we wait for Creed to run back in. Oh, coffee. So there we go, we can see him shooting away at the barrier, good, good, good. Right now starting to advance forward. They fight off a Nanabu, so we want to be playing very defensively at the moment as well. And again, I'm just fine with this cautious poking at the Reinhardt barrier. This is good, this is an amazing angle for us to get, because Reinhardt turns to face this way. We get a free flashbang, lowers their barrier, we can just shell into it, get an easy high noon out. They don't know what time it is, ladies and gents. It's time to get the hell off our point. That's what time it is, it ain't high noon. Beautiful. Okay, so what went so right there? What went so right there is basically just the fact that the enemy team um, were trying to fight two directions at once and just kind of failed at doing both. The Reinhardt didn't anticipate the threat of the McCree or didn't keep the uh, threat of the McCree. Guys, guess what? If there's a McCree coming in behind you, he's going to flash and get rid of that barrier. But there's really nothing the enemy team could have done very well here, except maybe if Zarya got lucky and managed to put the barrier onto the Reinhardt. But in that cluster mess, not going to happen. Really not going to happen. A lot of good damage coming out here from McCree. That's good, that's what we want, so we're taking the point. Now we want to reset our priorities. Remember, where is Genji going to be coming from, and where is the Reinhardt going to be? And the big thing for this next fight is we haven't seen the enemy team use any ultimate so far, except for Nano Boost, okay? This is what we've got to be keeping in mind now, is that they were winning for a long period of time, right? They're on 52%, so they were ahead, dealing more damage than us, so they have more ultimates than us, so they are going to have Dragon Blade, they are going to have Graviton Surge, they are going to have Whole Hog, and they are going to have earth shatter you are going to have to use all of them uh quick question in chat questions generally i'll answer at the end but i actually just spotted this one it's a perfectly good question was high noon necessarily there uh i kind of like it uh high noon is very difficult to get a lot of value out i very like i personally struggle a lot with high noon really a lot with high noon um and I'm fine with just using it to burst stuff down. It stops any emergency healing coming out and stopping anything happening. It just cleans the point nice and nice and effectively, efficiently. It's not an ultimate that's worth really banking um, and using like a big saved up resource. I've never thought of High Noon as an especially important uh, ultimate in the game. It's just good for zoning, maybe getting one or two quick kills. But other than that, it's not really that amazing of an ultimate. So I'm fine with using it there just to clean everything up, make sure that the enemy team has no chance of recovering and getting a value there. If the Soldier 76, for example, uses up there, then it will be completely different. Soldier 76 will be wasting his ultimate, Did, wouldn't need to use it in that instance. This to me is actually very greedy though, because we don't have a Reinhardt and they do, we actually want to be very careful about how we're going to be clumping. And the reason why is quite simple, it's that if the Zarya lands a Graviton Surge, we are just dead. Zarya lands a Graviton Surge, luckily we get the Transcendence out. Now the enemy team 
fuck up here, which is good news for us, which is where this guy uses this ultimate far too early. If he saved that a second or two later for the Transcendence uh, run out, we would just be dead. Okay, Genji's Dragon Bladed. There's a couple of things about Genji Dragon Bladed. Unfortunately, we just get caught by that and it's GG, no worry. We lose track of the Reinhardt, but honestly, I can't put too much blame onto you with this happening, because because it, it kind of feels bad, man. Luckily, they had to overspend on resources there, just because I think the Reinhardt messed up a bit, fired off his Earth Shadow too early, didn't wait for Transcendence to fully run out, and so got slept and controlled before um, they could really follow up on the damage. They do manage to take the point, of course, because... Genji can then come in, get a few more easy kills. You notice that, like, Reinhardt's got three kills already on the board. They should be able to clean this up and take the point. Ugh. Then we're going to get back into the fight. So let's talk about Genji and Dragon Blade, because the first thing you'll notice with Genji and Dragon Blade is he's got to do, and this is actually very good as well, I'll compliment you on this, which is just, the fight is over, it's done, we don't want to throw resources in, just wait. Good, 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 this is good play. Uh, I'll pause it here, actually, and slurp coffee. So the thing with Dragon Blade is that Genji's going to have to be dashing to get to his targets, right? I mean, he doesn't have long reach with Dragon Blade, so he's got to dash towards them. So you're always going to be thinking in terms of where is Genji going next and where can I put my flashbang at the end of that dash and control that. This is totally pointless and just feeding them ultimate. I want to point something out here that we're getting a... No, that was a fairly good headshot. We had two headshots on the Lucio there. Can you see him? Just up here? We did about 40 damage. We did about 40 damage. This is a sign that, you know, this is uh, a great example that McCree is just shit at long range. Like, we really want to be starting to close in. The thing is, it's dangerous to do that. Luckily, Soldier 76 got to the high ground, started to do some work there. Good use of I Need Healing, just lets your healers know. You only used it once, which is perfectly fine. The healers top you off. Lets you come in a little bit more to shell out some damage. You want to be a little bit careful of the Roadhog. That's sort of the major threat I'm noticing. This is a good position. Nice nice and distant, far enough away from the Roadhog to not get caught by the hook. Far enough to... And also just good to maximize our damage a little bit as we start spamming in, start rolling forward. Start dealing a good little bit of damage. Hey, Roadhog's getting low. Let's go focus him down. Good, 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 good. Let's roll forward and start finishing off the kills. Don't really need to use any resources at the moment. We've calmly and cleanly won the fight because Soldier got a good flank on, moved up, got rid of Lucio who was busy putzing around on the high ground like a moron. This is actually going to funnel nicely into a Lucio rant that I have that I've been building for ages um, because people ask me all the time about, you know, uh, wall climbing and stuff like that and, you know, oh, sh you should wall climb a lot, right? You should be using wall climb all the time. Well, what this Lucio ends up doing is he ends up positioning himself away from all his tanks, ends up completely unprotected and ends up dying. We're going to go through this fairly quickly. So notice the Lucio is up here. Well, this allows Soldier 76 to do it. Soldier 76 just ran off that way. He's just gone off. He's gone all the way around. And he's going to go and set up on this high ground, I think, and he's just going to kill this Lucio who's too busy sitting around up here rather than being with his tanks where he's nice and safe and protected or with his other healer where he's nice and safe and protected and he just gets exploded that's why you stay with your team you don't go on adventures on the high ground where you can just easily get killed off that's my mini that's a mini version of my lucio rant but i think it's very very true when you are wall riding around be very aware of sight lines how available are you to get shot how protected you are and all that kind of stuff. There is no reason to be away from your Reinhardt in that instance. There's no big ults coming. There's no Graviton Surge coming because we used it earlier. It's probably going to take a little while to get the next one up and running. Okay, big priority again is controlling this Genji. They've just fired off a Nano Boost. Let's try and control that a little bit. Oh, it's a whole hog. There's no way we're going to get up to that. Let's roll away. Good, good, good. Stay nice and protected. Maybe get a flashbang on him now. Would have liked to see that flashbang come out a touch earlier just to cancel that ultimate a little bit earlier. Now we've built up enough for an ultimate and now they've just lost, um, which feels really nice. All right, the Diva gives us an opening here. So. When you hear that nano go off, as McCree, you are one of the few sources of crowd control on your team, so you definitely want to be trying to find it and prioritize it. When it's a whole, whole hog, of course, we can't just run up to it, but Diva gives us a space to do it. We really want to try and cancel this as fast as we can, because it deals so much damage with the ultimate. This person here, this chap here, the Zarya, is in a lot of danger. Luckily, we managed to get the flashbang and get the kill. Beautiful. Lots of good damage coming out there, enough to finish it off. They use a sound barrier, but it's way too late. Doesn't manage to save anything. Genji's drawing a Dragon Blade, we want to try and get onto that as quickly as we can. Genji's jumping around, we want to try and close into it, can't quite do that, so we're trying to shoot him, miss a few times, managed to finally get him there. Okay, perfectly fine. Lucio, easy. High noon, zoning. So far, this was actually a pretty good round. Not all our rounds are going to go like this. Spoiler, this is why I picked this video. Uh, it doesn't all go sunshines and rainbows. So we're going to move forward into this more indoor map. Um, here and sitting up here, no team changes for us. They have a disconnect, but I think he comes back pretty soon. Um, so don't worry too much about that at the moment. Okay, so on this map, it's actually kind of interesting watching these teams set up because there's a couple of different ways to sort of address this map. Um, personally, I actually quite like taking the route going up here, but you've got to be very careful. If they have a fire, like we have a diva, so we can kind of do it and get away with it as long as diva defense matrix is. You can run it onto the side here and get a good overview of the point with the health pack up here. It's a very good way of holding out there. 
a little bit of jello. We're just going to skip out that. Instead, we just decide to set up over here. And this is where we want to be very careful. We want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on the front line, but we've got to try and keep an eye on the Zenyatta as well. We're actually in the right position. We want to be hanging around with Zenyatta, especially uh, just to keep him nice and protected. Rhinox charges in. This is a good opportunity for us to get a good, easy flash or just a right click and get rid of him. Genji's come in. Flash. Good. You notice how if we get the instant flash, Genji doesn't react in time. This is, I think this is his friend talking to him on Discord. So I'm just going to mute that while we just go over this. It's only the one instance where they're talking, so don't worry too much about that. Um, as we're just shooting through, shooting through, shooting through, Genji comes in. Like, at the end of a dash, if the Genji's paying attention, he'll know that the McCree is over here, and he'll start uh, deflecting immediately to buy himself a little bit of time, perhaps to line up a shot and kill on the Zenyatta. But instead, he doesn't notice it in time. We get the flashbang. Sure, he jumps on our head, but we... Like get enough damage on him. Unfortunately, we get killed by a deflect there, but hopefully he's any other finishing him off. No, he doesn't quite. Feels bad, man. But you'll notice McCree, uh, Genji's at this level when they finish a dash, usually aren't quite ready for the instant flashbang. So actually, you throw it towards the end of a dash, and so knowing the distance that Genji's going to dash is very important in shutting him down. Makes sense. Okay. So we will be shooting out now. He keeps shooting out. Oh, he's drawing the Dragon Blade. So again, first thing Genji's going to do is he's going to dash. He can't kill anyone here, so he's going to dash at someone, and he's looking straight at us, so the hint is he's probably going to be going for us. If that flashbang was actually right at our feet, it would have got him. And this is one of the things I wanted to comment on, which, you know, we do a good job following up with the kill, but it would have been a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner if we got the flashbang on the feet, is don't be afraid. Uh, as we go back and back and back. Too far back. Too far! Too far! Like, we throw it out here, and the thing if you throw a max range flashbang, and think about, like, the flashbang as a circle around where it detonates, if you throw it at maximum range, the detonation doesn't actually encompass McCree, okay? So if someone's going to jump on you, like, pretty much on you or on top of you or inside you, um, flashbang towards the floor or in the air, and usually to the floor is the better because it just detonates faster. It'll detonate the second it hits the ground, and that then the circle that the flashbang's radius is will encompass you and will include you. So that's how you get more value out of the flashbang, and it's very, very strong against Genjis where there is actually a habit for low-level McCrees to throw the flashbang past the Genji, who's basically, you know, nuzzling up to you, cuddling up to you, because he does more damage that way, and as such... Is a little bit more dangerous. Luckily, we get the left click on him, do land the kill, and then we start following up on him there. Now, we really want to be like, there's nothing, like, why are we backpedaling here? We want to actually be going into this guy a little bit more. We want to just be moving our way forward so we can set up, if he does try and keep the barrier up, or if the barrier doesn't go down, we can start threatening his barrier with the over the top flashbang and maybe setting him up for a kill or something with that. If you use Earth Shadow here, for example, uh, like if you're afraid of moving forward to get Earth Shadow, one, it's too early in the game probably for an Earth Shadow, and two, if you use it, it's actually good for your team because he's wasting a resource here. Again, we want to be in a position perhaps where we can keep forward and just keep that guy pressured, stun him, and maybe get the kill on him rather than what happened here. This is just tragic. I actually remember when I watched through this and just kept an eye on this. Um... There was nothing that we could have done, really, to stop this area. Like, this, this area just comes out of nowhere, on high charge, with a barrier up. There's nothing we can do. We're, we're just dead the second she's in the decision. What it's up to to punish this kind of thing, um, like, don't feel bad about that death. But the, the way you stop that is you kill the Zarya now. You, know, you notice the Zarya gets killed here by Yama Yama, our uh, Soviet 76. He does a good job getting the killing blow on the Zarya, which had to happen at that point. Overwatch Central is now hosting us for 85 years. Thank you, Overwatch Central. Uh, and welcome everyone to coaching the Mini McCree. We're, uh, we're into, like, the, the second map on, on this map. And yeah, we're just going through some McCree game. Unfortunately, the enemy team still does have the disconnect. That guy does come back. I do remember him coming back. I'm pretty got him too. Yeah, he does come back now. Diva, like the Diva bomb here. Um, from you know, like regular watchers for the stream, regular viewers on the stream will know that I hate what I call a naked Diva bomb. A naked Diva bomb is. One, when you just fire off a diva bomb and there's nothing else linked with it, there's no other ults just holding people down and keeping people uh, in control. It's. You know, so there's nothing else really happening or threatening right now. So the diva bomb just goes in, and on this map, there's so many places to hide. And this this is a stupid wall run by Gage. Um, there's so many places to hide that the diva bomb just does nothing. Don't do naked diva bombs. This one I'm a little bit more okay with because we're already winning the fight. It damages the Reinhardt Barry and forces them into an awkward position. Good Earth Shadow by him, but great, great transcendence coming out of us as well in response. This is the danger of falling behind. This is sort of a... This is... What's happening now is a conservation of momentum kind of thing, okay? They're starting to use ultimates, but because we've been winning and we're ahead, we actually have resources to counter those ultimates and deal with them. This Genji is just... This... Don't do this, because... Like, where, where's the cover? The... Like, we don't even need Flashbang to deal with that. So we have Flashbang available. Honestly, I would have liked to see a Flashbang. 
like we're in a perfect position here to throw a flashbang here and it will stun him, the bomb will go through and get a kill. This is actually one of the things I wanted to comment on. One of the best things you can do during a diva bomb is try and find the Reinhardt. Either roll through or move past the barrier and get like throw a flashbang this way, or try and throw it over to get rid of the barrier and kill the Reinhardt. Reinhardts are actually very bad at dealing with that because there's no good choice for the Reinhardt anymore. He either has to lower the barrier or raise the barrier, potentially exposing himself to the diva bomb, or he has to die. Like, there's just no good choice for him. We whiff it there. Would like to see it a bit higher or just behind him. Feels bad, man. At least you went through that. I actually didn't notice you went for it in the first few. So good, 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 good. That. Good counter here, and... Sometimes. Sometimes luck plays a slight role in Overwatch. Like, sometimes things go really well. You get launched to the freaking moon. It's not high noon. It's high McCree because he's in the air and he just kills everyone. Bit too early with the flashbang there. Would be nice to not see that. Um... I believe the reflect lasts about 3-4 seconds, I don't know, I've got an internal clock for it, but yeah, just a touch too soon. If you are trying to get it past the deflect, the big thing you want, also let's, while I talk about this, let's just, let's just watch the highest of high noons. Uh, if you are trying to get it past the deflect, think of the deflect like a mini Reinhardt barrier, it's also a bit higher than Genji, it's like a square in front of him. And you've got to try and aim it accordingly, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, otherwise you could try and throw it in front of him, it's just, you gotta be careful because the Genji deflect is like, if this is Genji, the deflect is like this. Like, think of it like that. It's like a mini barrier that's in front of him and above him a little bit. So yeah, otherwise we're gonna be getting back. Quick slurp of coffee. Keep myself lubricated as we keep going. Oh, good kill on Lucio. What is Lucio even doing over here? Like, th this is just, this is just, don't, don't be this Lucio. And it's kind of a disaster for their team, right? I mean, they've been 5 versus 6 in this map for a little bit of it. Again, another instance where we know that the Genji's going to dash. Like, the second you see this Genji dashing, we should already be turning around and flashing behind us at the floor. Because that would have ca uh, caught the Genji, probably. Instead, and actually, if we catch this guy with a flash, we could probably just melee him. The flash itself might have killed him there. Maybe not, because he's on, like, 30 hit points, so he might just survive. Otherwise... We're doing okay, like, we're in a good position now. I actually really like this position. I actually prefer this position for Soldier 76, and, oh, feels bad, man. Uh, stuff like that's gonna happen, because we don't- we only have D.Va to really, like, act as a barrier. This position I actually really like for Soldier 76, maybe less so for McCree, because as McCree, you want to be exerting that zone of control, that pressure. You can exert as McCree, because you have a flashbang, people can't run in very easily, and so you can exert a lot of pressure around this spot here. Over here, at Soldier 76, though, you're exerting a huge amount of pressure, because it's very hard to get to you, you've got a health pack behind you, and you can put healing down over here as well, you've got nice cover, it's just a very nice position for 76. McCree, I think, wants to be a little bit more forward. If we could get there, unfortunately, in this instance, the enemy team is running riot. We should probably have been helping uh, shut down the D.Va a little bit more. Like, there was uh, an instance there to get a good flash on the D.Va. I think, if we can get behind her, maybe. Uh, we can get a flashbang on her. Just shutting down the D.Va, stunning her for a little bit longer, allows people to get kills on her very easily. Uh, shuts down the defense matrix, sets you up beautifully to get some good kills. It's all very nice. They've dropped a D.Va bomb just to try and confirm the point. That's fine. We just have to regroup, slow it down, relax. We've got ultimate advantage. We've got everything we need. We should be winning this game. We're actually in a really good position right now. So remember, if you die, just look at the opportunities available to you. Let's shut down this guy. Unfortunately, we don't manage to do that. And Zenyatta dies. This is where I, like, this is one of the mistakes I see new players doing a lot. And it's not actually necessarily on the McCrees back here. It's on the rest of the team. Like, why are people pushing up here? Why are they pushing up here when we've got people running back from spawn? They've just taken the point. There's no advantage right now to starting to push this way. Zenyatta already gets low. We miss a shot, but the only way we're getting a flashbang is if we roll in here and try and flash that, and then we just get booped off or killed by Zarya. So there's no good choice for us here. Zenyatta's just dead. He's out of position, and down he goes. Feels bad. This, again, is just an example of a Lucio who I think is being overly fancy. We try and get it. A cheeky flashbang doesn't quite work. We just have to heal up. Let's go and pick up the health pack, although... This is why I would have picked up the health pack. Um, it's not to sort of begrudge the Anna, it's just the fact that I think Anna has better things to do than be healing a McCree in the back line. Um, I know, like, conventional wisdom, right, is to do this, because, you, you know, I've seen it before where healers get salty. First of all, my confidence in the Anna just plummeted um, when I just saw the grenade do that. So I just thought, okay, solid. I need to get back in he full health because we're still fighting. So I need to get to 200 as fast as I can, not be building up ultimate. This is not safe because there's a Genji around. Like one hit and a dash and I'm dead. So I need to be picking this up as soon as possible. 
The second the Genji appeared here, this is when I'm going, Ooh, I really should have picked that up, because now he picks it up, and now he's perfectly safe, he can almost get a kill on us, luckily Zarya has to come back and save us, and isn't on the front line anymore. Could potentially be disastrous, it's like Soldier 76 is now playing tank and thinks he's the Reinhardt leading the charge, and it's in a little bit of danger, everyone gets caught up here in the Graviton Surge, we have no defense against it, or the, no, we have no defense against it, and I think Transcendence, maybe Transcendence came out? Did I see a Transcendence? No, I must not have. No, there was no Transcendence, good. Okay, we just died, they just used an ultimate, we're still fine. Like, this is where you want to be on voice comms, and if you are really, like, looking to climb, this is actually a very good way of climbing. Uh, it's not to say inside cum, because I don't know what that means, and I, I don't think that's appropriate language for your game. Um, but, what you want is to keep the team morale up. Like, you would be surprised at how important morale is to um, winning games. It's one of the big points I wanted to sort of address with this, because you'll notice as the VOD goes forward that team morale actually does start to decay pretty badly. Um, morale is ridiculously important. And just saying things like, it's fine, guys, we've got tons of resources, we just beat them next team fight. Like, that is actually a really good way to just keep people confident, keep people feeling good, and keep people pushing forward. And you'll be surprised, it just, like, even if you just type it, it's like, it's okay, guys, we got ultimates, let's use them. Because you just have to win one team fight. Like, that's what you have to do. It doesn't matter how many resources you throw into that team fight, as long as you win it. So we're actually in a really good position right now. Monkey's going ape. We can just back away from that. Like, let them use these resources. Now we just go defensive because they just fired off two ults. We don't roll this way. We don't do this. Why, kids, don't we do this? It's because there's a big frickin' cliff right behind us. What's about to happen? Yeah, no, that feels bad, man. Luckily, our team managed to win. Soldier 76 came in the back line, cleaned up. I imagine he had a nano boost on him as well and got himself a shitload of kills. Maybe he didn't, actually, judging by the press of tabs. So, no, he didn't even, like, you didn't even need all these ultimate soldiers. He just ulted and killed everything. Uh, but the second I saw that, like, this roll happened, it, it's just, just, just be aware, guys, that this is a big knockback machine. So don't put yourself near any ledges. You want to be in a big open space as quickly as you can with Winston because you don't want to be in a corner and you don't want to be in this situation right now. The power of hindsight. It's not even the power of hindsight. The second I saw there is a Winston ulting and there is a cliff, the Winston's just going to go, oh, 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 free kill, free play of the game for me if I knock people off this. Ha! <laughs> Feels good. Okay, we're still contesting. Diva Bomb gets dropped into it, gets two kills. Let's try and get something done. I could throw a flash into the back of that. Diva, for example, just shut it down a little bit more. Now that Diva's out of mech, this is a really good time to use Deadeye. We use Deadeye. We can just hold on. Zarya's too low to kill us in time before it runs out. That's just a timing thing that we can learn. Two shots. Boom. Done. Just Genjo. Don't have deflect. Beautiful shot. And oh! Oh! That's why people play McCree. That moment there is why people play McCree. Like, that, that exact moment right there. I just want to watch that again because it's, it's satisfying to watch as well. All right, we get these headshots. Boom. And boom. Oh. Oh. Feels good, man. Feels good, man. That happens. And it's, hey, it's looking really good. We're 2-0 up. We're moving to this final map. Feeling all right. We, we haven't made too many mistakes. We want to be controlling this Genji a little bit more. We want to be a little bit sharper, I think, with our flashbangs. Just a little bit more aware of Genji's movement options. Um, how Genji moves around. Like, so this McCree, like if I wanted this McCree to improve as fast as possible, I would tell him to go to quick play, play a bunch of Genji, and just see how it feels when you're playing against an enemy McCree, uh, enemy McCrees, and how they react and how they act. And the McCrees that are really shutting you down, what are they doing? How are they reacting? It's often that they're catching you on the edges of dash, because you can't cancel dash, for example, into a deflect. So while you're dashing, you are vulnerable to getting a flashbang. And so a lot of good McCrees will actually catch you during the dash. They'll wait for you to dash, flash you as you're coming in, and then you're just sort of stuck there like a lemon and get right clicked and killed. Genji almost gets it. The second you see Genji's hit points going low, he will be doing that deflect. Luckily, Zarya gets the kill on him. And now we want to be setting up to pressure this area as much as possible, like following the Discord orb. Good, 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 good. We have a um, Zenyatta, so we definitely want to be pressuring whatever he's targeting. Good shot on that. And again, like, I'm actually very comfortable with this positioning as well. I like this positioning. Diva comes in. She unfortunately eats the flashbang. Not too big a deal. She has to drop it at some point. So we can start spamming away. It looks good so far. And again, we want to be just in the team fight, tucked nicely in the team. Now we want to be aware of extra threats coming on the side as the respawns are going to be starting to come back up. Good shot on the Diva. 
And hey, they have a Royal Hog now again. So we want to be careful of that hog. But we mostly want to be finding where this Genji is going to be going. And trying to, like, this is where I'd be inching more towards this choke point here. Because we can exert pressure on this choke point. Because if they're trying to move through it and we have flash, we just stop them coming in. Especially after Zarya's used her barrier. Um, it's actually a very, very good way of just stopping the push. Luckily, we managed to catch the point. Almost get hooked in that. Thankfully, like, even hook 1.0 occasionally missed. Let's get some free shots onto this Roadhog. Good, 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 good. We now have a high noon. We can use it whenever we like. We want to be very careful, though, because Genji's a bit of a distance away. And a distant Genji deflecting It's a very good way of killing us. Okay, they fired off ult. We just used Transcendence. We just want to hang around with us any other as much as we can. Just keep with him. Um, just because it makes us nice and safe. They just dumped resources into the Genji. As long as he doesn't get much value, we're feeling good. Looking real good right now, right? Looking real good right now. Okay, damage, 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 damage. Good shooting, good shooting, good shooting, good shooting. Just spam into that. Looks good. All looks good. Uh, Mr. Artie in chat actually said, raised a very good point as well. This guy does have good aim. He does have very good aim. Um, like, it's weird because you're trying to calibrate sort of um, in your head. Like, why is this guy in platinum? Why is this guy around here? And his aim, like, doesn't look platinum. It looks reasonably good. Actually, if we go back to when he pressed tab. Like, our accuracy is really high. Considering that we, we haven't been just like shooting the Reinhardt, this is actually a really, really, really good accuracy. So it's like, why, why is this guy in plat? And I'd say it's a couple of things, one or two things. It's like the flashbangs need to be a little bit better in just in terms of controlling enemy movement. We also need to be uh, contesting tanks a little bit more. And I'd also say that so far we've gone relatively unpressive. We've mostly just been contesting with a Genji. That's going to change now that another player enters the field. And this looks crazy, right? This looks absolutely crazy in that they've picked Farah into McCree and Soldier 76 and D.Va. Like, these are some of the hardest candidates Farah in the game, and they picked a Farah into it. Let's see what happens next. Right now, our priority has shifted. Um, because they got a Farah, now we have to be very cognizant of the Farah, of the Genji, and then dealing with the tanks as they try and push in. We almost died there to the bomb. We could have just stayed, uh, stayed nice and safe, tucked under the point. We're looking to get rid of the Genji. The Genji is so low that even a flash bank can kill him, so I'd be just thinking about my flash. He goes down. But now we want to be like contesting the point. We've got to make sure that we stay on this point and stay contesting it. The Farah distracts us, Roadhog gets a kill. And now we've got to start dealing with multiple threats a little bit more as they start pushing in more because they're doing more damage and actually doing a better job of pushing into us as they move away from... I think they were playing triple tank before, and now they're playing with a Farah instead. This Farah is going to be very important as the game goes on. So then, we grouped up. Good, 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 good. This is what I like to see. We want to group up. We don't want to take too long. We've activated the attack visor. Like, uh, I don't know why Soldier has been nano advised so early. I don't know why he did it this early because Diva's still up. Uh, this to me is just very greedy. Luckily, we managed to get into the side and get rid of the Diva in time to maybe do some damage. But to me, that's just that to me is just a big signal that Diva just holds down right mouse button and nothing happens with that alt combo that could be very powerful. Okay, Hulk hooks down. I don't know why we're uh, peeling back a little bit here. We actually want to be peeling a bit forward just because the threats to us, which is going to be like the Diva's d mech so she's not really going to be stopping us doing damage. Roadhog hooks down. We can actually afford to start pushing in a little bit, pressuring in a little bit more rather than being so sort of tentative around the back here. Now we want to be a little bit careful because, oh, hello. Oh! <laughs> yeah, let's get, let's, let's just linger on that a little bit and just, just feel your, your bum pucker. Okay, this, this is actually way slower than I was expecting in terms of going back. Uh, okay, fine. We won't do that. Because uh, it just takes too long. But yeah, it's... Okay, this is like this to me is a flashbang that was good. It's just a little bit misaligned. But these kind of flashbangs are the ones that I want to see out of this guy a little bit more. Oh. oh. And these are the kind of flashbangs that I was talking about that really will make the difference. Because Genji draws Dragon Blade... Like, when you see this, this is actually a very good illustration of it. The Lucio fucks up because he boops this guy back, so Genji misses. It's like, thanks, Lucio. We just have to be a little bit closer. So again, it's just feeling out that flashbang range a little bit better. Because that was a good prediction. We knew that he was going to go for the Zenyatta, because what, Genji wouldn't. Waste of a nano boost there. I don't think he, Genji needed that, and I think it's too little too late on the Genji. Um, like, on a fight that's already kind of over, once the McCree dies, you don't need that. Always, let's just keep moving forward. Now the team starts uh, fragmenting. Now this is what happened. This is like the morale thing that I was talking about, which is pretty simple. Team morale actually starts breaking down at this point. People start sort of giving up, and it's weird because we are actually ahead still. Like, we are ahead. 
but people start doing stupid things like running in and engaging when they don't need to like someone's over here fighting why is this person over here why is this happening and this is where you want to like this is where voice comms really can make a big difference um i think one of the best ways to rank up is honestly just being aware of the power of just saying the occasional thing is don't be bossy don't like act like you know everything don't take over the game just say things like okay guys let's just group up try and maintain positivity in your voice in in the inflection of your voice you don't want to be <sighs> okay guys let's group up you want to be okay guys let's group up like just a little bit chipper a little bit a little bit uplifting a little bit hey guys yeah we still got this just group up like never be down on your team never be aggressive on your team because it just takes over uh, because it just like the negativity just causes people to make really bad decisions they lose confidence in your teammates and they just do stupid things and engage in stupid ways okay this genji has deflected but we're being pushed back at the moment just wait out the pushback okay let's follow this in as fast as we can let's try and get onto something at the very least bold high noon very bold high noon this is why i rate high noon as very low priority like there's some heroes where it, when you have ultimate all you're thinking about is using that ultimate right reinhardt's a very good example of that zarya very good example of that mercy for example when you have resurrect ready it just takes over the game you know you, you're just thinking about using that ultimate with mccree dead eye should just be something in your back pocket dead eye should be something that you don't really think about that much because right now Honestly, the most effective thing we could have probably done is just roll forward and flashed here. Like, you notice that there's a big clump right here. If we followed this area in and rolled in and maybe got the flash onto that, maybe it could have done better by slowing down. We get the hook easily on us. He probably would have hooked us anyway, so it's a bit academic. But I'm just sort of saying that be very careful when using high noon and the opportunities you get to use high noon because that was an opportunity that it just felt forced, like you're trying to force a high noon. Luckily... Looking good at the moment. We're in overtime. The team actually manages to capitalize off the back of it. Bomb goes off, kills absolutely everything, and we start taking the point. Now we just have to hold it. It would be nice, though, for example, if we had a high noon available. That's just, that's just me, like, rubbing in the point a little bit and just putting a little bit of salt in the wound. And so we start holding on a little bit longer. We just want to plug away, just back up a little bit. Okay, Farah's coming in with a uh, nano boost on her. That, that is literally what we just did. Like, what Faro just did is what we just did. It's greedy and pointless. You didn't need to do that. She was totally exposed, totally on her own, didn't have the support of the team, didn't have anything blocking her, and then just, you know, justice reigns from ah! Insert laughing Widowmakers here, because... It's just, she didn't need to do that. She didn't need to sacrifice some ability, and she could have held the point a little bit longer. Okay, let's try and shut down this Genji once again, protect the Ana. That was actually, like, I call that a good flash and a little bit unfortunate that it missed. And still, we want to be actually focusing on the Genji. We're very low, and we've actually made a mistake here, um, which is where we've just isolated ourselves away from where anyone could help us. Because we dropped low, like, just pressing the X button right now might have helped just so that Anna maybe turns around and gets a little bit of healing. Because running this way definitely means we don't live, because this happens. I need to get some coffee. And now we see the nightmare situation start to develop. Genji starts taking over because they can't control him anymore. Uh, Diva's doing a good job at the very least of holding point. But the Genji's still running amok, dealing a huge amount of damage, getting kill after kill after kill. Soldier can't handle him, clearly, as he goes down. Huga doing a very good job actually taking over this game. And I'd say actually between, like, from what I could see in this game, I'd say that you did a very good job, and I'd say that Huga did an extremely good job this game. Um, like, their Genji just really started to take over. Okay, we're actually in a good position here. When Hook's down, we can afford to fight a little bit more. Diva, unfortunately, comes in to spot him. Now it's a nightmare situation because Diva. This is why, guys, this is actually why, um, and this is a really good example of why McCree should be coming back into the meta now, is this exact situation. Because in this situation, if this wasn't D.Va, we could actually probably still take this fight. We've got Anna healing us, we've got the Roadhog to dodge, which we can kind of do as long as his hook's down. And if this was any other tank, I'd say we'd still have a pretty good shot of winning this fight. Because it's D.Va, we just... Defense Matrix up. What can we do? We can't do anything. We're going to die. It feels bad, man. And in that situation, honestly, there's nothing we could really do except try and burn as much of Diva's Defense Matrix as possible and make sure that she doesn't have at it. Doesn't make sure she doesn't have it available in the coming fight, and therefore we could perhaps win the point because we're still right, really close on the edge of it. We're just like we're about to win maybe we're gonna take it we're gonna hold on oh no oh my lord oh it's going so well we had to pick tracer i'm perfectly fine with a swap to tracer here to try and get back to the point as quickly as possible they're also doing it 
Nano boost onto the Diva. Not ideal, but good enough. But then Genji gets another ultimate. Now we have to be so careful. We've got to just focus on dodging. And yeah. Did we blink backwards there? No, but we just didn't blink fast enough. The second Genji dashes onto us, I tell you, that's when you, you've got to just blink away immediately because he's so dangerous to that Dragon Blade. And spoiler! Defeat. We don't actually take it.